Jesus loves you. My name is Cody, and you are watching the Wednesday episode of the Christian News Show thing that I do. Let's do this. First of all, I need to say prayers out to anyone who's being affected by the Isaac hurricane. From what I've been hearing, it's not really going to be a huge thing, but people are scared because it is the seven year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. So, regardless, it is a hurricane. Prayers to you guys. I hope that everything is okay. I hope that uh, everything goes well and that you stay safe and we move on. The next news story is something I talked about a while ago, and that was GSN's Bible Challenge game show. And I don't have too much to say about it, but it is on the air now, and it is GSN's number one most viewed show ever. So a lot of people are getting really excited because they're saying, you know, people want family-friendly entertainment again. And what's exciting about it for me is that it's something Christian and it's entertaining and people are watching it. That means that Christian entertainment can be something, regardless of how cheesy of an idea of it is. But it does mean people are willing to watch something Christian if it's not terrible media. And that truly excites me as one who thinks that Christian media is dead and that it needs to be revived and that, as far as I believed, nobody was willing to watch stuff with that Christian label because they figured it would be boring. And this goes completely against what I thought and is really, really exciting because that means that if Christians are creative with our media, that means that it's not going to be some terrible thing that people don't want to watch. There's a chance that people obviously are excited to see stuff like this. So that is very, very exciting news. The next news story I've seen on like Facebook, I'm just seeing it all over in Christian media type stuff, and that's a Bill Nye the Science Guy is an evolutionist. <gasps> if you guys don't know who Bill Nye the Science Guy is, he had a show from 1993 to 1998, and it was just a science show for kids. Anyways, he went on a science blog, and he made a video that's kind of gone viral titled, Creationism is not appropriate for children. If you want to watch the video, link in the description below as always. It's really crazy, you should watch it. But in it, he completely degrades anyone who believes in creationism, telling them that they're bad for society and they should not be teaching their children anything about creationism because the entire idea takes away from our future. Now to be specific, he's talking about creationism in the mindset that uh, the earth was made 6,000 years ago. And the part that just makes me the angriest about this is that this guy, decides to just tell everybody that they can't believe what they want to believe. I not only believe in freedom of opinion, but I believe in freedom of thought, thinking what you want to think. He claims that people believing creationism is pulling back our society and not letting us develop as a race. And to me that just seems like straight up discrimination. Me personally, I keep an open mind on the entire subject. It doesn't affect my faith in any way. But to tell people that they can't believe something, I just feel like that's wrong. Let me know what you guys think. We go on to the next story. Well, our last story is about Fire Church who recently had a gay protest at their church building. And the new story itself is really feel good. It's about gay protesters came because they said that Christians hate and we replace the word hate with love and just kind of mask it over the word love. And I've heard this before. I've heard that Christians are judgmental, we're hateful, we're hypocritical, but we call that love. We say that our judgmentalness is love. It's an excuse used a lot by the Westboro Baptist Church who claim that their hateful protests are out of love. So it's by no means uncommon to see that. So about 10 protesters came out to the church, started a protest, and the leaders at the church gave them you know, snacks, um, water, coffee, things like that. And they talked to him, they gave them genuine love, and it's a really, really awesome story. But I was reading into the story, and I was looking at it, it's a Christian site, so it's a biased site, and I started to really wonder about the fact they were already noted ahead of time, they knew that these protesters were coming. And so my question was, if they wouldn't have known that those protesters were coming, would the congregation as a whole responded in a loving manner? So, my question of the day for you guys is, do you think the American church as a whole is loving? Do we really love everybody, or do we sit there and discriminate and judge people because their sin is different than ours? I want to know what everybody thinks, so leave a comment in the comment section below with your answer. Leave a video response if you want to. And we go on to the verse of the day. And the verse of the day today is more like the verses of the day, because I love that the Bible defines what love is supposed to be. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7 says, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserves. Always. So, again, my question, do we as Christians do that? Atheists, do you think that we as Christians do that? Do we do a really, really bad job of loving people? Which is the most important part of the Bible, I think, is love your God with all your heart and all your soul, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. 
Anyways, that's all I found interesting in the news today. So, in closing, let the haters hate. Let the Christians pray. Tell everybody to like and subscribe. I will see you later, and God bless.